have to make her see you as a child, innocent. Then she would tell you the bedtime story. Bedtime story? What's the story? So we meet this apartment superintendent, Cleveland Heap, who hates people breaking the rules. Stop putting your clothes in the garbage disposal and stop smoking. Especially the no people swimming after 7 p.m. rule. While someone has been swimming after 7, and he thinks he catches her, but then she doesn't come back up for air, so he goes in after her because it's been a whole 10 seconds, and clearly no human could possibly hold their breath for that long. That is a sad fact I've come to live with. Well, he doesn't find anyone, so he gets out, runs, slips, hits his head, and falls back in the pool where he passes out. And he dies. No. See, he's the main character, so he just wakes up in his bed. But when he looks around, he sees a creepy ginger chick staring at him. Oh, your face doesn't look right. Apparently, this happens to him all the time because he's just like, Where are you from? She saved him? And he asks her where she's from? Yeah, it's pretty stupid, but it's written that way so we can find out that she's not human and from a place she's not allowed to talk about. The blue world. I'm not allowed to speak of the blue world. That's top secret, that is. And then she asks if he gets all tingly when he looks at her. And he's like, actually, it really hasn't been working right since my wife and kids died. And to thank her for saving him, he tells her she needs to leave. But she says she's scared. So he lets her stay, but he wakes up to her cuddling up on him. So he does what any normal man would do with a scared half-naked woman. He carries her outside in the middle of the night to dump her on a lawn chair. Mr. Heap is a player. But there's a creature out there in the grass that starts to attack them, so he runs back inside. Tell her it's not a creature. There's no such thing as creatures, all right? While that chick, whose name is Story, was asleep, she said that she was a narf. <sighs> narf! Couldn't have said that. So he goes to ask this girl, Young Soon, who is desperately trying to look like a rooster, if she knows what a narf is. Well, why would he ask her? She's a, a student at the university. But it turns out, she already knows what a narf is from a bedtime story she was told as a kid. But she doesn't remember it, so he wants to ask her mom if she remembers the story. And she's a little reluctant to tell him. But she does tell him that a narf is a sea nymph that needs to inspire a chosen one so she can get a ride home on a giant eagle. And Mrs. Choi won't tell him anything after that. No more questions. Don't ask any more questions. So Mr. Heap goes back to Story to find out if she knows who the chosen one is. And she says that all she knows is he's a writer. Is this person writing something important? And wouldn't you know it, a writer moved into one of the apartments yesterday. I've been hired to be the local film and book critic for the paper. Unfortunately, he hasn't written anything since he moved in, so it clearly can't be him. But his neighbor wrote a book once, so he goes to talk to her. But the book she wrote was 20 years ago, so it can't be her either. So he just leaves her alone to play with a butterfly. I adore them. He gets really desperate and thinks that it might be a guy doing a crossword puzzle because he's got a pen, and technically that counts as writing. But if she's supposed to inspire the writer, why would they think they're already writing? Exactly. You would assume that this is going to be something that they write after she inspires them. So any of these people still could be the writer. Well, at least he's trying to help her. Well, the truth is, he walked in on her naked, so he's trying real hard to get her to leave. You think someone that used to be a doctor would be comfortable with something like that? But I didn't go to medical school, so what do I know? You don't know anything. Well, later, he bumps into Young Soon, who tells him about the creatures that chased him, called Scrunts who try to kill the narf when she's out of the water. So if she just stayed in the pool, she'd be fine. But Mr. Heap doesn't suggest this because she would be breaking the rules. And there's no swimming after seven. And then on the way back to his place, he bumps into a tenant who he asks, How's the writing? And then it dawns on him that he's been looking for a writer so he can kick the naked girl out of his house. And since the writer he's supposed to be looking for is supposed to write the most important thing ever, ever, the writer of this story makes it himself. What a incredible seismic narcissist. But he's already written his book, so I'm not really sure what she's going to inspire him to do. Like, do a second draft or get somebody else to read it? It needs to be on some t-shirt or something, you ass. In the future, a boy's going to read his book, become president, and change the world based on his ideas. So Mr. Heap introduces them, and when the writer looks at her, he thinks he's going to be sick. Not my cup of tea. So now that she's inspired the writer, the eagle can come and get her. So Mr. Heap just leaves her by the pool and goes to take out some garbage. But she runs into the stairwell to get away from the scrunt. Instead of just jumping into the pool, she was right next to where she would be safe. She's hurt, 
So he takes her to the writer's apartment so she can rest, while he goes back to see Young Soon. But she's out clubbing. But they think I have no social life. But apparently not having a great time because she not only answers her phone, but is totally cool with helping him with his questions about a bedtime story. I guess the eagle didn't get story because the scrunt that attacked her isn't afraid of Tartutix, evil monkey cops of the blue world. Did you have a stroke? I did not. The author that's going to change the world really wrote that. Why are people going to suddenly take me seriously? He also learns that scrunts have poison scratches, but there's an antidote. So Mr. Heap has to find it in the pool. Turns out that he might want to get a new pool guy, because there's a whole cave underneath this pool that this guy who takes his job way too seriously completely missed. You guys been having parties in here? Bubble parties, bubble bath, everyone goes in skinny dipping? No. Not only does he find the antidote, but lucky for him, she's been keeping glasses of air for absolutely no reason, and he's able to breathe while he searches. I think you need some fresh air. He also sees that she's been stealing his stuff and stashing it here when he's not looking. If she left the apartment to go back to the pool, how did she get past the scrunt? And why didn't she stay there? Because then, the story couldn't happen. I'll trust you on that. But Young Soon comes back from the club and tells him that the grass dog might not fear the monkey cops if he's trying to kill a Madame Narf. Alright. And what is a Madame Narf? A thousand Narfs is about a rare Narf who comes once in a generation of Anoffs, who is called the Madam Noth. Who would write this crap? Shamalama Ding Dong. Shamalama Baby. Ding Dong. Well, Mr. Heap wants to know how to get Story back home and off his couch, so he needs to hear the rest of the story. But Mrs. Choi needs to see him as an innocent child, so he puts on a milk mustache, and the overweight, full-bearded, balding, middle-aged man gets in the fetal position, and Mrs. Choi's like, oh, baby, I want to tell him a bedtime story. You were a doctor. And so with what self-respect he has left, he goes back to tell them that they need to find humans with special abilities that all conveniently live in the building. And these people have been unconsciously drawn to live near the vessel. There's a guardian that Story thinks is Mr. Heap, which also means his family was murdered so he could help a sea nymph. I actually want to believe it. And then there's an interpreter, a guild. Uh, they're supposed to help with their hands. And a healer who will have butterflies around him. So he goes to the critic who tells him that the interpreter will like puzzles and the guild will be together all the time. So he goes to the crossword puzzle guy and a group of stoners and says, hey, do you guys want to help a sea nymph get a ride home on a giant eagle? Stop right there. I'm in. And everyone is strangely okay with it and go to say hi to her in the shower. So as she lays on the shower floor, they consult a crossword puzzle on how they should keep the grass dog monsters away from the Madame Narf. I hate you. The crossword puzzle says that the guild should throw a pool party, but then have everyone go inside to watch a band when it's time for the eagle to come. Oh my god, that was your plan. Yeah. And you all went along with it. I was, I was having my doubts. Later that night, as the guardian, Mr. Heap wants to ready himself for tomorrow night, so he wants to face the scrunt. It's my job. He goes outside and finds it, and Story tells him to challenge it to a fight, but it won't be able to fight him if he looks it in the eyes. When he does, it moves towards him. Why isn't this working? And now he knows he's not really the Guardian. You are not the Guardian. But the Knight of the Eagle is here. Sorry, this is taking so long! But before they go, the writer wants to talk to her. He's like, my ideas are so good, it may take a long ass time before anybody realizes my genius. It might take decades or longer to create a reaction. And since Story didn't specifically say he meets the kid, he naturally assumes he gets assassinated because his ideas are so genius. Someone gonna kill me because I write this? What kind of person would be so arrogant to presume to know the intention of another human being? That's stupid. He could die in a car accident, or of cancer, or of old age, or the kid could be born 200 years from now. What makes him think anyone other than this specific kid is going to give a crap about him? Lori, you need to remember that this writer is the same one from the story. So of course he's definitely getting assassinated. His genius couldn't possibly be appreciated by the dumbasses living today. Jackass. Young Sin is not stupid. Okay, so what are these amazing ideas that are going to change the world? Oh, we don't get to find out. See, he would actually have to come up with something that made sense, and if this story's telling us anything, he can't do that. 
don't let it hurt his feelings. But she also says that he'll be able to meet the first two of his sister's seven children, even though she's already 40. The girl's drying up. Who? My sister, if she don't start living, her body's gonna dry up. So everybody goes to the pool party, and they're supposed to look at the grass so the scrunt doesn't try anything. Why doesn't she just wait in the pool? Because there's no swimming after seven. That's why they need so many people around. I saw you! Come out of that pool right now! But Anna drops her mirror, and the stoners want to go watch some guy puke. Don't worry, we're all watching you. So when a balloon pops, the scrunt grabs Story and drags her off towards the woods. But Mr. Heap sees that she's gone, and is able to catch up to the giant creature dragging his friend, who made no noise whatsoever when she was attacked. And even though the scrunt was willing to attack Mr. Heap on two other occasions, this time it runs away. Show him who's boss. They get her back inside, but the scrunt sneaks in the door. There's nowhere for a dumb big animal to hide. The scrunt will hide unless he cannot hide in his environment. The healer lady tries to patch up her scratches by talking to them, but that doesn't work. Isn't this supposed to work? And they also point out that nothing else is working, so the crossword puzzle guy's like, dude, I was just making all this shit up and y'all went with it. So are you sure you got the right people? And Mr. Heap's like, fucking new guy. He's the one who told me who to look for. And for him being wrong about a question and leaving the party early, he goes into the hallway with the scrunt and dies. I was completely surprised by all of this. That'll show him to criticize artists. There you go. There you go. So the crossword puzzle guy suddenly remembers his son is weird. So they all go to his apartment to watch his son read cereal boxes. He's a prophet. The guild turns out to be some sisters that all watch Mr. Heap kill a bug, but they also need a guy that never leaves his apartment and another that never leaves his bathroom. He's got this growth on his ass. Once they convince those people to help the now dying Madame Narf, it starts raining, so all the tenants go inside to watch some band they've never heard of. Why does everyone like to stand around and talk in the rain in movies? The group's all together now, but the healer isn't hugging her hard enough or something, so after 10 seconds, they all want to give up because they didn't see any magic healing. I want to be like a child again. But then the kid says he read the cereal boxes wrong and that the healer is a dude. And Mr. Heap is all like, oh yeah, I used to be a doctor. Maybe I should help her. Oh, yeah, hey, Good for you. you. Close. That's when the lady that was totally convinced that she could heal a sea nymph just by telling her to get better is like, that butterfly you saw land on me was actually following you around, Mr. Heap. You're the healer. I thought so. So he holds her, and everybody touches him, and for some reason, he tells his dead family he misses him, and that makes her legs heal like she's Wolverine. And now that she's better, it's time to get her to the eagle, so they head to the pool where the sisters plan on defending her from the giant grass dog with whatever cleaning or kitchen utensils they could find. Strange behavior for them. They're not usually so trusty. But the scrunt is still inside, and somehow kicks the door open backwards, and is now out there with them. But this one dude, who oddly only works out one side of his body, goes out in the rain for a hot dog and ends up staring at the scrunt. How would working out only one side of his body help him fight it? Shut up. Being the guardian doesn't mean you have to fight. He only has to stare at it and push it back far enough away for the eagle to swoop down and pick her up. The working out thing is completely separate. I'm like a scientist. So, since his one job is to maintain eye contact with the grass dog, Just keep looking in his eyes! Keep looking in his eyes! When the eagle squawks, he looks up and the scrunt attacks him. But he's saved by the Tartutix, and the monkey cops beat the shit out of the grass dog and drag it into the woods. No one who has seen them has lived! And now that the coast is clear, the giant eagle can carry the Madame Narf back to the blue world. Her return would be seen as a great inspiration. They make fun of me. Why did you do that to me? Because now you'll remember to pick up your Legos before I step on one. That's not the answer I expected. There are humans with powers that can help her. These people just have to hit the like and subscribe buttons and share the video to help her. We're ready. But man does not listen very well. That's over. That's over. <laughs> it's, it's safe. So, how was the, um, movie? Sucked. Oh, what a shame. <laughs>